should a trust be listed as a beneficiary of a 401k or IRA or a spouse? Welcome to Barry's Bites. Please join our host, attorney and financial advisor, Chris Barry. Typically, I break almost all assets into these two categories. One is qualified, one is non-qualified. This is just kind of a general way to think of things. So qualified accounts are like 401ks, IRAs, Roths, 403bs, 457s, and I'm sure there's more. Non-qualified is basically everything else. So qualified means there's some type of tax qualification to them, like 401k, it's in the tax code, 457, it's referring to the tax code. And it could either be tax deferred or gross tax free. Really, the way it works is any of these qualified accounts, typically when we're talking about beneficiaries, so who do you name as a beneficiary of these accounts? Typically, and this is just general information, we name the spouse first, and then we would name the trust if we have a trust as the contingent beneficiary. The reason for this is a lot of times the spouse can do what's called a spousal rollover, where now that account becomes that surviving spouse's account, and it really becomes their account. Let's say you pass away, you're 75, your spouse is 67, you were taking out RMDs, now the spouse inherits that, now they don't have to take out any required minimum distributions of those pre-tax accounts. So I'd say majority of the time we name spouse followed by trust as beneficiaries of qualified accounts. And so when we're putting together a trust and, and reviewing it and making sure the funding is handled properly and we're retitling those assets, I would say majority of the time we're naming spouse and then trust. If you don't have a spouse, so let's say you're single or widowed or divorced, then we would almost always name the trust as a beneficiary. And I'd say that's how we handle it like 99.9% of the time. There are certain exceptions, but that is almost always the way that we handle it. Now, non-qualified accounts, really everything else, typically we would just name the trust as the beneficiary because the trust typically provides for the spouse first. And then if not the spouse, then the other beneficiaries are the kids. The big reason why here we're naming the spouse first is typically there's a, a tax benefit of doing so because they can do a spousal rollover. So who should be the beneficiary of my 401k or IRA? Trust or spouse. Typically, I'd recommend spouse first, and then if not the spouse, then the trust. 